Something seems to be changing rather than nothing. Amazon has decided to give us something. And today we've got lots of some things to talk about. From all of the news at JordanCon, bunches of confirmed castings, including a major character and a fan favorite, one of the absolute best casting introductions that I have ever seen, and my new favorite member of the cast, a Q&A from Rafe Judkins and Sarah Nakamura, a first look at the IEO in full costume, a new set that has the internet speculating, season three new directors, some leaked season three scripts, conventions coming up. <sighs> okay, so that's a lot. We've got a lot to get to, so let's get to it. So as I mentioned, there is a lot of stuff to get to today. And as always, you can see what level of spoilers that we are dealing with on any given topic right here. Also, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel to help YouTube share this with the people. You know, algorithm stuff. But let's go ahead and dive into the news. And we have quite a bit of it. All right, so the first thing to discuss is something that I am super excited about. A little more than a month ago, I was at JordanCon and that was a blast as always. It's great to see people and meet those of you that watch the channel, and of course talk about the Wheel of Time. But JordanCon is not the only Wheel of Time convention. WattCon, a convention that I should share, I have a fairly large hand in planning, is coming up here in July. We are less than two months away, and last year we announced our special guests for this year, and those are Michael Livingston, the author of Origins of the Wheel of Time, Michael Kramer and Kate Redding, the super awesome narrators for the Wheel of Time audiobooks, and lastly, Maria Simmons, Robert Jordan's longtime assistant and member of Team Jordan. Well, it's time for more announcements. Coming up on this Monday, May 22nd at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will have a live stream on this here channel with a bunch of the team behind WatCon, and we will announce a couple very cool things. For one, we will be talking virtual ticketing and a new option for this year. That'll be cool. We'll also announce all of the panels and the schedule for the convention, as well as some cool events and fun stuff that will be happening at the con. If you are somebody who is coming to WatCon, or if you're somebody who's interested in coming to WatCon, or you just want to hear what it's all about, this will be something that you should be a part of. Just look for the live stream links on YouTube and Monday, May 22nd at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in and watch the stream and follow the WatCon socials for on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and all of the places. Speaking of JordanCon, this past JordanCon was a rather eventful uh, JordanCon from uh, at least a show news perspective. If you want to see more about what I thought on JordanCon and some of the stuff that we got into at the convention, go check out the live stream I did with Twitter of Time comedian Kevin Angus, where we talked all about our experience and some shenanigans that went on at JordanCon. You can find that link up here somewhere. But let's talk about some of the news that came out of JordanCon. Uh, while we were there, Rafe Judkins, the showrunner for The Wheel of Time, and Sarah Nakamura, who is the book consultant on the show, they put together a video for us that had a Q&A, a set location, and more importantly, some casting announcements. Let's first talk about those casting announcements. The video that was played for us at JordanCon opened up with three Aiel women announcing their roles and letting us see them as Aiel for the first time. So before getting to those other announcements and things like that, I have to say, regardless of how the season itself turns out, I love the costuming. They look exactly as I pictured the Aiel in my head. Costume design was on point in season one. And so while I didn't expect that it wouldn't be, they just look really damn good in my opinion. But as the video opened, we have Ayula Smart in the middle announcing herself as Avienda. On the right, we have Maya Simonson who will be playing Chiad. And on the left, we have Raga Ragnars who is playing Bane. Raga is somebody that I had pegged to play Birgitta, but I think she definitely also fits the role of Bane. Now I'm stuck on how awesome they all look and I'm excited to see more of the Aiel on screen. We also got a bit of maiden hand talk here as well, which was pretty cool. But later in the video, we also got confirmation of who Jay Duffy would be playing. We knew from previous reporting way back that he would be part of the show, but we weren't sure who he'd be. Um, now we have confirmation that he will be playing Hot Dane Bornhold. Uh, I think it's worth watching the entire video as he explains a bit about his character and some of the filming. What is interesting, uh, again, is that we have Hot Dane Bornhold. I guess all of the characters are hot, so I suppose that makes sense. But what was my favorite moment of the entire video was the announcement of Rima Tewiata as Shiryam. She is my new favorite cast member and all because of this casting video that she clearly put together on her own, and I'm gonna go ahead and play it for you so we can just enjoy it together. Hi. I'm Rima Tewiata. Mm. 
When I auditioned for Wheel of Time, they had a false name for the show. And false characters. The script was elevated and magical, but I still didn't know what show I was going to be in. When I got the role, I found out. I was shocked, but calm. It felt surreal, like I was floating. I love being in Wheel of Time. It's so easy to become immersed in Sherry M. And their thoughts and moods and tactics and shifting intensities. And I look forward to fans experiencing the dynamics between Sherry M and novices and Sherry M and Aes Sedai. Enjoy series two. Incredible. I mean, literally, like, no words. So we'll just move on. All right, so other than the casting announcements themselves, the room and the set that Rafe is sitting in as he talks during the video is another major drop. So here's what Rafe had to say about it. We are working hard on season three of Wheel of Time. I'm here on a set that features quite heavily in season two. A scene that looked really effortless in the final cuts. I think it looked effortless in the final cuts, but was hard to film. We actually did a couple scenes in this room that were incredibly difficult to film. A lot of resets, blood, visual effects, uh, water, resetting of costume, unsetting of costume, change of costume. Um, it, it was massive and it all took place in here. You'll see it in season two. And it's a little bit in season three as well. So you might be able to tell what it is from what's behind me, I don't know. So when this video first came out, there was some debate as to what this set was. And I think what threw a lot of people off is the fact that the Aiel were in it which made people think that this was either like the Stone of Tear or Roideon. But based on what you can see in the background and Rafe's description of it earlier, I think it's pretty obvious what this room is. The room is where the accepted tests are done. And you can see the arches and some of the similar markings to other structures that we saw in the White Tower in season one. The explanation for the Aiel being there is simple. They were in the middle of filming season three when they made this video. There was a set that they weren't using at the time. They brought the maidens in to film this short blurb and here we are. So what does this mean though for season two? Well, I'd imagine that we would at least get Nynaeve's accepted test in season two, which might explain some of the scenes that we saw from the teaser last year that seemed a little out of place or maybe hard to pin what they were. Some of those clips looked like they could be from a dream sequence and more likely her accepted test. So in addition to the casting announcements and the set videos, we also got a Q&A from Rafe Judkins and Sarah Nakamura and several of the cast members who recorded their answers remotely. I'm not gonna talk about all of these. You'll have to go watch the full video for that. Again, I'll have it linked in the description of this video, but I am going to talk about a few of the answers that I thought were important for us to discuss. So let me go ahead and play a clip and then we'll talk about it. Well, I mean, one character that I love and I'm very excited to see come to screen is the character of Elida. I think she's incredibly complex in the books. You think she's a dark friend, she's not a dark friend, and that makes her all the more interesting for the antagonistic role that she plays. Hopefully that's not a spoiler alert for anyone who's <laughs> come to Jordan Con, but I think that she's a fascinating character and she really shows why all of the characters in this world have such depth and they all have their own drives that end up driving the plot and the story. So. I thought this was one of the bigger drops. Uh, even though the question said future seasons, I don't think that guarantees that we're not going to get Elida in season two, but I do think it's a big relief to me and some other people who I've seen making content about the Wheel of Time that they are not combining Elida's character with Leandrin or anybody else so far that we know of. There was a lot of speculation that she would be combined with Leandrin, and I personally believed if they did that, that would be a huge mistake because they play different functions. And as Rafe said, Elida is an antagonist who isn't even Evil, which is, I think, something that makes her a great villain. And of course, we all love to hate her. So I'm glad that that is confirmed, that we don't have to worry about that going forward. I mean, we really wanted to draw from all of the elements in the books to explore the Aiel. I absolutely love the Aiel in the books. Everyone does. So you see it all in the show. Gia Toe, Gai Shane, like we're doing the Aiel 
the very best that we can exactly as they were in the books. So, it's good to hear that the idea will be adapted fairly closely to how they're written as a culture. I am not somebody who sets the idea up like that culture and that way of life above all others and idolizes it. I actually think it's pretty messed up. But I do want it adapted well, flaws and all, because I think that's a huge part of the world of the Wheel of Time. All of the cultures have massive flaws, and some of them are really bad. Normally, when they're going to make serious changes, you'll hear Rafe say something like, we're going to do our best to get the spirit of the idea or something to that effect. Here, we just got that they want to do them as closely as possible, so that's refreshing to hear. I think we will probably get pretty faithful adaptation of the Aeol. The differences between Sidar and Sidine in season two, I think that we will absolutely see. I think that um, this year, in general, fans are going to be excited at how the One Power looks overall and all of the various forms that the One Power comes in. The channeling for season two, I think overall is going to make fans really, really excited. The delicacy, the beauty, the intricacy, the weaving. As with anything in any show, there's evolution and I think that we'll be seeing that this time, this time around and we'll be really pleased and thrilled with it. Okay, so let me translate that, what Sarah said for everybody. We weren't happy with how the channeling came out in the first season. We had some limitations with visual effects and what we wanted to do with channeling, we didn't get to do. This year, we have a bigger budget and we've taken longer to get it right. You'll be able to tell the difference between the weaves and we are going to correct some of the things that went wrong in season one. So I think that about sums it up. All, all joking aside, I think you can see the excitement on Sarah's face to say that she thinks that we will like uh, what we see from channeling at least a lot in season two. I, I know Sarah, and I can tell you that she cares greatly for this series. She wants it to be as good as it could possibly be. So to hear her say that she thinks the channeling is gonna be great and that we're gonna like it, uh, that makes me confident. Adapting the Shanchen to screen has been one of the big challenges and also excitements of doing season two of the show. We all really fell into the Shanchen world, really wanted to make them feel simultaneously like a culture that had been separated from the other cultures of our world for a long time, but still felt a part of the Wheel of Time show. That's the big challenge and the excitement of, of creating the Shan Chem world. I won't say that they have a Texan accent, but we do make a very strong nod to what was suggested might be the accent of the Shan Chen by Robert Jordan. Not gonna lie, I'm a little upset that we aren't gonna get Shan Chen with Texas accents. Pura is a good to Manny. <laughs> But I do think striking the right tone with the Shan Chan is important. They need to feel foreign and strange and horrific and also somewhat relatable. They need to have some nuance. Uh, they are horrible. They condone and use slavery, but there are some honorable Shan Chan and essentially brainwashed into thinking that what they do as a culture is right. So somebody like Aginan and her views evolving over time would be cool to see. So I hope they don't make the Shan Chan just evil, evil, evil. I hope they make them evil with some nuance, if that makes any sense. All right, so as many of you know, I typically do not take sponsorships on this channel that I don't use and I don't believe in myself. This channel is a passion project for me. I'm not doing this for a living. So I typically won't do a sponsorship that I just don't care for. That's why I'm proud to be sponsored by Queerencia. Queerencia is a clothing and merch brand that is dedicated to supporting and normalizing LGBTQ people and supporting causes in that community. I know the owner of this company and his story is amazing and his reason for starting this business is powerful. So you may also know that Pride Month is coming up here in June. Queerencia is currently selling Pride boxes that come with a whole bunch of stuff to get you ready for the month. The boxes include a shirt, a tote bag, koozies, stickers, fans, wristbands, phone cases, and all the stuff that you need to get ready for Pride season. If you are interested in a Pride box or any of the other really cool stuff that they sell, you can get 10% off your order by heading to queerencia.co forward slash nabless. Uh, not only will you get a discount, but you're also going to support a brand that also helps support other LGBTQ organizations. Again, you can either head to queerencia.co forward slash nabless, or you can just use my coupon code nabless at checkout. 
but let's go ahead and get back to the news. All right, so one of the most exciting pieces of news to come out of the last month has been the casting announcement for a fan favorite character and somebody that the community had been begging to get confirmation of. Just recently, Mira Sial has been cast as Varen Mathwin for the show. I shouldn't say she's just been cast, but we just found out about it. Rafe had hinted at this right before Jordan Con but stopped short of announcing it officially. But then we got an announcement from Amazon right before the BAFTA Awards, where she accepted the BAFTA Lifetime Achievement Award, which is really quite amazing. At the event, they showed a clip of her as Varen, which I will play for you right now. The Wheel of Time and Mrs. Sidhu. Oh, oh, well, that was a lot quicker than I thought. So... Let's throw up the image and we'll start talking about it. So Varen is one of my top three characters in the series and a character that is so well done from start to finish that she is on many people's lists of top characters. It's exciting to see her adapted to the screen and Mira Sial looks as though she's going to do an amazing job. Now, what's really blowing my mind is the fact that we have Mira Sial now as Varen, Rosamund Pike as Moraine, Sophie Akinado as Swan Sanche, and then hopefully Shora Agadashlu as Cad Swain. That would be batshit crazy and an amazing cast cast of badass Aes Sedai. So the casting in the show to me has at least really been on point. I, I've had issues with writing and the way that some of the VFX came out and some of the, the choices they made from an adaptation perspective, but I've been uh, pretty on point, or at least I think they've been pretty on point with the casting. Let me know about what you think of the Varen casting in the comments of the video. All right, so with all of the excitement about season two coming and casting announcements, it's important to note that there are also some exciting things happening with season three as well. So we know that season three had started filming recently. I'm not entirely entirely sure if they are still filming with the writer strike happening. And I know that Rafe is a member of the Writers Guild. So either way, there was filming going on. And just recently, Wattseries.com uncovered some more information about the people that would be directing the episodes for season three of the show. We already know from previous reporting that Kieran Donnelly would be returning to direct episodes of season three after directing episodes in season one of the show. He's listed as the lead director for season three and an executive producer. Well, Wattseries.com is also reporting that Thomas Knapper will also be returning to direct in season three after directing some of the episodes in season two of the show. But there's also a new director, Marta Cunningham, who will be directing episodes of season three. Now, she's directed episodes of Star Trek Discovery, Fear the Walking Dead, and the show Transparent. So there's some fairly big names there. It appears that there will only be three directors for season three, likely meaning that Kieran Donnelly will direct four episodes of the eight episode season. All right, the last piece of season three news is kind of cool. A Wattseries.com has gotten themselves a copy of two different audition scripts for season three. Now, keep in mind, these are not scripts for the actual show, but rather scripts used for auditioning characters for different roles. However, in the past, these audition scripts have been mostly accurate to what happens in the show. So what series has two different scripts, one that they were able to get transcribed and the other one they could only, they could not get transcribed, so they just summarized it. The first one is as follows, and it is for a female Aiel character. Keep up, Wetlander, we're nearing water. What happened? A fight with the Shido clan over the spring, judging by the wounds. Many have awoken from the dream in this place. We should bury them. They're not worth the time or the stones. It's their own fault they're dead, and if those who killed are near, even more reason to get moving. I thought the Aiel were supposed to respect their dead. They are not Aiel, and I am respecting them. The Tuatha on run from battle, refuse to defend themselves or those they love. They choose to die for their way of the leaf, and if we don't move now, we may end up rotting there beside them. My power is strong, but even I cannot take on the full force of the Shido. So based on that script excerpt, it appears that they're going to be introducing the Shido as villains in season three, just like it happens in the Shadow Rising. Although they are less villains and more just simply antagonists in the Shadow Rising, they become villains later. This scene is almost directly from the books as well, which feels in line from what we know about season three uh, being about the Shadow Rising and supposedly a more direct adaptation of the material. Now, the second scene they received, they could not transcribe, but I will read you the summary. This scene takes place between a Two Rivers farmer and Perrin who are talking late at night. The farmer says that he needs to return to his farm because the Lord Luke has instructed them to do so. They have an argument over whether this is reasonable, and Perrin believes Lord Luke isn't to be trusted because he's an outsider and could just abandon them at any time. The farmer retorts that while things are different now, at least they have protection. He's frustrated at being ordered around by Perrin, who he's known since birth. He reminds Perrin that they are farmers, not fighters, which he'd remember if he hadn't been gone for so long. 
So this is, again, confirmation that they are adapting the book very closely, as this scene pretty closely happens in the books uh, when Perrin is back in the two rivers. Take uh, the information from both of these scenes with a grain of salt, as again, it's simply an audition script. But nevertheless, I like what I see so far. So that is the news. What do you all think of it? Let me know in the comments of the video and make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to get notified when I release new videos. Make sure to click the bell icon as well. That makes sure that you get the notification. Also, tune in on May 22nd at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the WatCon information release. And check QueerNCA.co forward slash Nameless and get your pride box. Lastly, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. You all make all of this possible. If you would like to become a patron, check out the Patreon link in the description of the video and you can support me in what I do here. Lastly, check out one of these videos here that you might also like. Until next time, peace out.